supposed to be a quiet sprint stage, but unfortunately there was a crash at 60 k to go. Julian Alaphilippe, the world champ, out of the race in the 11th stage of the Vuelta. 190 k's long along the coast for a lot of it. Could have been crosswinds potentially, but there wasn't. Uh, so it was a pretty sleepy and slow stage. Finishing late, there was a soft breakaway. Even though it wasn't completely flat, there were a few rolling climbs, none categorized. It was still not the hard day compared to like Carcassonne stage in the tour. So breakaway with Repa, Bow and Bowl gone, and it was being controlled by Archaea for Dan McClay in the fluorescent yellow, Bernard for Trek for Mads Pedersen, Alberson for Tim Mellier, and Luke Durbridge for Caden Groves on Bike Exchange. So at the breakaway at 2.31, four strong teams with resources, pacing and motivated. This break didn't have much of a chance. And with the crash as well for Akiba Cone Farmer in the break, the break slowed down, lost another minute. And on the coast, it's pretty narrow, slippery, dusty. And Alaphilippe goes down. We didn't see the helicopter shot of this. At least I haven't seen it. And Quickstep have just put out a release saying that he dislocated, presumably that right shoulder that he's pointing at, dislocated it in this right-hand corner. And so I don't know if he went over the bar or slid out or whether he went over someone who'd crashed in front of him. So many people wearing white jerseys in the peloton, impossible to tell who's who, but not looking good for him and not good for Renko Evenepoel, losing maybe his best domestique left. Bora started helping for Danny Van Poppel in the sprint. Ben is out with COVID, but they think Van Poppel can go for his own result. And Mads Pedersen's in the green jersey. He went for the intermediate sprint with 10 k's to go, and then it was train time. Very long, straight finish this sprint, wide road, so time for big trains. Bike exchange on the right, Jumbo Visma to their left. They got Harper, then I think Hersink. They got Roglic tucked in in a pocket there. Movistar for Mars, Quickstep for Avonpool, and Ineos on the right hand side for Carlos. Rodriguez. So Bike Exchange are actually the only sprint team really at the front with the firepower in front right now. I think it might be be Craddock, who's in really, really good shape. Wilson Craddock actually is powers through on the right-hand side. Ineos kind of stayed there with Van Baal for the Spanish champ Rodriguez. And so Bike Exchange had Simon Yates, their GC man, out with COVID before the stage. Ineos had Sivakov out with COVID before the stage. So Bike Exchange were very motivated for the sprint and they now have one option for this race, which is Caden Groves. But it's a little bit early and Bike Exchange have been a little bit early in sprints this year. And with a long straight road like this, Crowder pulls off three k's to go. Here's the first look from Kel O'Brien. And he knows that it is a little bit too early, but there's not very there's no FDJ train here. There's no stack sprint trains. I mean, Van Poppel's the best lead out man, but he now sprinting for himself. And so Crowder just keeps going and there's no one swarming them. Ineos aren't trying to desperately maintain right front position. It's under three k's to go. And you see O'Brien goes for 2.7 k's to go, 60 k's now. Looks back again. And no one's coming. Bahrain have got one guy. Ackerman's just got Milano. He looks back and a long look back too into the eyes of Dylan Van Baal. Maybe some words too. Trying to get him to go forward. He almost he opens it up the space a little bit for Van Baal. And Van Baal eventually does slide through when you see the... Uh, so so O'Brien's on the front, but he's not going full gas, at least from what it seems to me, because Van Baal goes forward here a little bit. So Van Baal's trying... Oh, sorry, O'Brien is trying to make himself go deeper into the race. And he can obviously do that by keeping the draft of Van Baal, not hitting the wind himself, and he's keeping Groves who's not having to move up at all, not having to spend any energy, not having to come through the right exposed side like a Merlier or an Alperson or a Pedersen or a McClay. He's able to just stay tucked in, fourth wheel, in a seat the whole time, keeping his legs fresh. And then with 1,800 meters to go still, O'Brien's not going like full last, you know, about to burn his legs for his leader. He's looking, sees Alperson coming over, but they have no one on their wheel. I don't know if it's Vermeersh or Tamino. And he just slots onto his wheel. And the Alberson lead out was a little bit of a shambles today, like moving up and then basically just extending O'Brien's lead out 1,500 to go. And then he slows down. And then you see on the right-hand side, coming up fast, a quick step rider with, I think maybe McClay or Arkea on his wheel. O'Brien is going to surge to make sure they do not come over him, all those riders, and pinch him off and squeeze them and so that Groves would get then get boxed in. And then here's another mistake from the... The next Alperson lead out man, he sprints, starts forward, knows he doesn't have Merlier on the wheel, presumably, because he's looking back, and then just goes forward anyway. 
and just slots, looks back again. And O'Brien looks at him and it's like, is he going to offer me a draft as well? And just slots over to the left in front of O'Brien and then provides a pocket for him. But the Bahrain rider has mechanical. And so Groves, he's just able to just keep spinning the legs in the draft the whole time. No one's boxing him in. Finally, O'Brien now really starts to do his last lead out. And he's extended this because of those three riders he was able to draft, maybe 300, 400 meters longer than he could have, which means that Hepburn, I think it is last man, I'm not sure, is able to go longer himself. And you see Pedersen uh, on the wheel of Kirsch. They're having to do a big move up the left-hand side. This costs energy, costs Pedersen's legs maybe. And Kirsch isn't able to actually bring Pedersen forward. Like Van Poppel's so good. And Kirsch is usually like second or third last man, but Van Poppel can bring his guy like forward ahead of everybody else. Pedersen gets dropped off a little bit on the exposed side on Groves' wheel. And here's the problem for Groves. Whilst O'Brien did his best, they still were a bit early. And Degenkolb launches with about 275, and he's now level with Groves with momentum. Same with McClay on Arkea, and that means Groves is big risk of getting boxed here. Big, big risk of getting boxed in. It's, he's been squeezed before, earlier at 700, but he had his wheel in front of Pedersen, and he's able to slot onto McClay's wheel, who then goes from Milano to Degenkolb, and the open right side opens up for him, and when he could release his sprint, he was, I think, the quickest. I'd like to have seen Van Poppel, but here you see Kirsch brings Pedersen, and Groves has been sitting just on, on the wheel the whole time, not having to do any of this perfect draft the whole time. I don't know where Maldir is. Um, McClay is sort of half in the wind in front of Milano. Degenkolb goes... From that for the Hail Mary. And yeah, it wasn't looking good for Groves here, but because he's got the wheel in front or his whole hip in front of Pedersen, he's able to slot onto McClay's wheel. That then gives him a much better draft. Well, he's got a much better draft in this important section while he's getting up to speed. Pedersen's hitting a lot more wind compared to Groves whilst he's in the perfect pocket. And then he's actually got enough space and he's ahead of Pedersen. He's able to swing out and the space Merlier wasn't there in time to get around McClay and open up his sprint when the sprint van Poppel sneaks through, kind of doing a McClay, but was too late, but it was in the draft side. So I don't know. Gross probably the strongest. Great win for him. Important win for bike exchange. Valuable points, 100 of them, beating Van Poppel, Merlier, the Milano, Pedersen, McClay, Degenkolb, Wright, Bullens, and Boy Van Poppel, 10th. Here's what Caden Groves had to say after the stage. You know, this morning with the news of uh, Simon going positive for COVID, uh, all the boys pretty disappointed, and... Uh, this is the best way to bounce back uh, after such bad news. So I'm really happy to celebrate, but also wish uh, he was here because he's part of this team. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. So no changes on GC during the stage, but Sivakov and Yates are out. So everyone moves up two spots that were behind them. Ayuso moves up, I think. Almeida moves up. Aiden Paul still got that 241 lead on Mars, but he lost a loyal lieutenant in the race, Alaphilippe, today. How that affects Alaphilippe's World Championships bid, I'm not sure. Initial reports that he hasn't broken anything is good, I guess, but we'll have to wait and see. Until tomorrow's video, ciao.